Right, hello there. Um, today we are going to be moving on from having a look at a detente and um, we're going to be uh, now looking at some of the um, consequences that came out of um, detente all falling apart. Um, what we're looking at today as it says here on the slide, is uh, why did the Soviet Union invade Afghanistan? This is one of the core reasons as to why the period of detente in the 1970s all really falls apart. So, just as a starter, before we really get into anything here about Afghanistan and about the Soviet invasion of the country, um, I want you to watch a video um, and just give some questions of thought here. So, the starter says that the Cold War got its name because neither superpower pulled the trigger on one another. But if we look at other wars around this time, there were some that happened as an indirect consequence of the Cold War. So, I'd like you to watch the following video. And as you're doing that on your worksheets or on your piece of paper, I would like you to consider these questions while you're watching, please. So the first one is, uh, what is meant by the term proxy war? The second one is, how were the super excuse me, how were the superpowers guilty of escalating this conflict in Korea? And finally, based on this, why might the Soviet Union have wanted to invade Afghanistan? So I'll let you pause your video, watch the video, and try to answer these questions, and then come back to this video when you're ready. Okay, I'm assuming that you have watched the video on Korea now and you've given those uh, questions a bit of thought there. Um, it's interesting really to see there how, um, although there was high involvement from both the US and the Soviet Union, they never had the period of directly fighting one another. And that really is what we talk about when we talk about proxy war. It's a war that's been influenced or created by a major power that doesn't necessarily become... Uh, too involved with the war, okay, or at least if there are powers on each side, they don't then fight in that war. So it's a it's a war that happens outside um, of the superpowers and outside of their countries they rule directly, but it's a place where they can get involved in as they have an interest in that certain place, as we saw in Korea. So as you're watching that, I hope you would have maybe thought about why the Soviet Union would have particularly wanted to get involved in Afghanistan. Is there kind of some parallels you could make, perhaps? Other key words to look out for today is Islamic fundamentalism is something that maybe you've heard on the news um, before, but essentially it's just a religious and political belief um, where people would want to uphold the strict word of the Quran. It's important to say there aren't just fund fundamentalists for Islam, there are fundamentalists around the world for all different types of religions, but um, it's just one that um, really drove a lot of change uh, around the Middle East during this time, and it's one to just have a look out for. Another word here is jihad, um, and that means that uh, if you are doing jihad, you are fighting against the enemies of Islam. So, um, religious fundamentalists uh, or Islamic fundamentalists sorry, um, may turn to jihad in order to defend themselves for example. And then the final key word of the day is the Mujahideen. And this was a group of Islamic guerrilla militants that were based in Afghanistan and they were um, there when the Soviet Union invaded um, the country and uh, they compelled in this struggle uh, of jihad to try to defend themselves against the Soviet Union and try to liberate their country. So they're an important group um, and you need to just be aware of who they are to go on through today's lesson. So I'll give you time now just to pause the video to write these down uh, in your keyword banks and then we can move on. Okay, so you should have written those words down in your keyword banks now so we can move on to the lesson now and get into this. Just the first thing we need to say um, as we go on throughout this key topic is just important to know the various leadership changes that happen uh, around this time. So you were um, introduced last lesson to Richard Nixon, who um, he is in charge of America in the early part of the 1970s until the Watergate scandal. Uh, then next comes Gerald Ford. He's not really someone we look at too much in this scheme of work, mostly because he just leads... America throughout the period of detente when nothing uh, or no major incidents really occurred. So you don't really need to know much about Gerald Ford. But towards the end of the 1970s and when the Afghanistan war 
uh, or the Soviet Afghanistan war takes place, we have Jimmy Carter who is in charge and he is in charge of the USA when this period of detente really falls apart. So he's the man who is in charge of the country at this point. So just be, be bear that in mind. Um, and after him, we have Ronald Reagan, who is a um, very sort of strict Republican, uh, and he was essentially not responsible for, but he did lead the USA throughout what is known as the Second Cold War. So after this period of détente, um, the Cold War escalated once more, and he was there um, really trying to navigate the country through that. Um, and he also probably didn't make things entirely better. You'll you'll have a look more at him. Um, as we progress. So just to start off, why did Afghanistan interest the Soviet Union so much? Well, just I'm just going to present this map to you here. Um, if you know where Afghanistan is, that's brilliant. You can see it's just on the southern border um, of the Soviet Union there, sort of wedged between Iran, Pakistan and the Soviet Union. Uh, so it's going to definitely interest the Soviet Union because it, it's a country that borders um, itself. So therefore, it's going to be somewhere where the Soviet Union needs to keep an eye on. But there's something in particular that happens around this particular point where Afghanistan becomes a, a major interest to the Soviet Union. We already know that uh, the Soviet Union had this buffer zone on the Eastern Bloc, but it didn't have anything else around it on its other borders. Now, the Eastern Bloc was the most significant place for the Soviet Union to um, maintain itself because there were the capitalist forces in the West there and plenty of America's allies were based in Europe. So it was important that that Eastern Bloc was there. Um, but what happens around this time in 1979 is the Iranian Revolution. So the Shah in Iran, who was very sympathetic to the Soviet Union, was overthrown and replaced by a religious fundamentalist government. So this was a bit of a problem for the Soviet Union because in communism, in strict communism, like the one that the Soviet Union was trying to achieve, religion and religious freedoms were not promoted to the point that um, a religious person would want. Uh, so that essentially means now, now Iran has become this religious, uh, re um, Islamic fundamentalist country, it is not going to want to listen to the Soviet Union in terms of pushing its policy of um, spreading communism and ensuring that Iran is working with a communist country because um, a com communism does not allow Iran to succeed in its goal of promoting a religious, uh, an Islamic fundamentalist state. So Iran becomes a massive problem. Now, not only is the fact that Iran not going to be working quite as closely with the Soviet Union, the, the other issue here is that because there has been this revolution where people have successfully overthrown their regime for a very popular Islamic government could mean that the ideas might spread, especially around the southern border of the Soviet Union. This was a big problem for the Soviet Union because there are about 30 million Islamic people living within the Soviet Union, particularly along the south. Now, Afghanistan becomes a very interesting place for the Soviet Union to think about because that country could potentially act as another buffer zone to stop that religious fundamentalism from spreading into the Soviet Union. So suddenly, Afghanistan um, is of massive interest to the country, to the superpower. So how did these event, well, how did the events in Afghanistan unfold? Well, luckily for the Soviet Union, in 1978, Afghanistan had gone through its own political troubles, but this time it could handle it. We see um, this pro-Soviet man um, called Nur Mohammed Taraki take over the government in, in 1978 and he works very closely with the Soviet Union uh, to make sure that his government is stable and the country stabilises after his um, takeover. It wasn't necessarily successful though um, and very soon afterwards, um, because of his brutality, the deputy leader Hafsula Amin takes over the country from him. Uh, now, Amin causes a bit of a headache for the Soviet Union because uh, he wants to work with the Soviet Union, but he's also under pressure from a lot of different forces in his country, and it looks as though he might need to work with the USA in order to um, ensure there is peace within his country. Now, um, eventually he's assassinated, and um, we have this Babrak Carmel 
individual, the leader, come to um, rule Afghanistan after this, very much hated within the country. Um, and he's very weak. He's only being able to be propped up by the Soviet government. Let's just very quickly have a look at a few of the events that led to this. So, as we say, we start off here. Um, in fact, I'm not even. I don't think I want to just talk you through this. I think you can have a look at this yourself. I'll just put these all on the screen here for you. Feel free to pause this and just read through um, what had happened and how the events really progressed um, in Afghanistan in 1979. So I'll just, um, I'll let you just pause that and um, I can move on now. So just to go on to the lesson for today now. Um, as you go through the web page, read the information. The first thing I want you to do is the stop and think task. So when you've read about um, Afghanistan, I want you to think about which superpower had more to lose in the developing crisis in Afghanistan. Was it the Soviet Union or was it the USA? Um, and why? Why was it more important for one to have control um, more than the other? The next task I want you to do after you've read all of the information here um, when you think about what events led to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, I'd like you to create two newspaper stories for an Afghan newspaper. So pretend you're an Afghan journalist here that's trying to report on the developments in the country. So I'm allowing you to pick um, two of the four dates. You can pick um, anyone you want to, any two, two of the four you want to, and just start to write a newspaper article. It doesn't need to be very long. Uh, it just needs to have a title and sort of have some of the key developments that have happened around that sort of time. The very last thing I'd like you to do after you finish that task um, is just to complete this research task here. So um, I want you to have a look into who what the, Mujah the Mujahideen were, okay? Um, all you need to do is have a look at those questions that I've posed to you there, research them online, and try to answer some of those questions so you can know, um, carrying on, why they were significant and important um, especially in terms of uh, the Soviet Union's consequence of this war. So next lesson we're going to be moving on and we're going to be having a look at the consequences of um, the war with the Soviet Union um, the war between the Soviet Union and Afghanistan. Um, I hope that lesson has been helpful. Do let me know on Shama homework if I can help you out with anything further and good luck.